So um, I think one of the interesting things to know, both in American culture and in Australian culture, is it, and really with any culture that was once started by Christians or with a Christian worldview is in the atmosphere, when you look at how those cultures have abandoned their foundations now, you don't just get things like the culture of death, but you also get um, a much bigger government. Like we say, right. you know, we don't want God's law, and so it becomes man's law, it becomes right. tyrannical, rules over every single little detail yeah. of life. That's one of the things I've noticed even about Sydney, yes. Brisbane, mm. is just the level of government control. Like a crack in the sidewalk. Right. Yeah. You can film here, which is three feet away from here. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think it speaks to the task of Christians at hand who may live in Australia, places like Sydney, Brisbane, the cities that we've been to. They have a task ahead of them because here in Australia, it's unlike the United States in that you have kind of a, even a cultural Christianity difference. Like in America, back home, even if you don't necessarily aren't able to articulate the gospel and know things about Jesus, there's still that cultural nominal Christianity. But right. here, that doesn't exist. Right. It's, it's, it's just secularized. It's, it's man's law, man's at the center. And I think if Christians really want to make an impact here in their presentation of the gospel, they can't begin at the cross. They have to begin at the garden. They have to go back and tell the story of God as he's revealed it and him being the source, the origin, the foundation. The Bible says, for from him and through him and to him are all things. And I think that if Christians in Australia can get back to clearly communicating the biblical narrative of creation, God creating man in his image, male and female, the commission um, in the garden, because you mentioned centralization, right? The state having wanting to have ultimate authority. If God's not at the center of that picture, then man will undoubtedly place himself at the center of that picture when you have competing narratives of history. You have the worldview that all we are is just matter in motion, um, that mankind is really no different from any other creature. They're just part of the interdependence of all things in nature, right? right. And in that worldview, nature even our very bodies aren't the handiwork of a designer, a good creator God who commissions us for his purposes, who uh, calls us to reflect his image and his glory into the world. And having that title of uh, a vice regent or exercising creative dominion over God's creation, not rebelliously, but in accordance with God's revealed standard um, as his children. When you, when you remove that, you have a hostile creation. You have something that is in need of being controlled and manipulated. And so man has to exercise that level of control because creation is no longer the handiwork of a loving God. It's a hostile environment in which man has to surmise his 10,000 commandments rather than God's 10 commandments in order to control and exercise his dominion over because it's hostile to man. And so you must be in control. You must have man at the center with centralized there government. There has to be a sovereign. There has to be a Lord. Mm -hmm. And if Christians can communicate that story, get back to the garden, get back to what we lost, and then of course what Christ comes in to restore and to reconcile and to bring back to man, um, I think some progress can be made. It's, it's interesting being here. You look at America because you know we live there and it's a fight we have to fight and be a part of. So we're looking at our culture and the places that are falling off and what we have to do to work the gospel into all that stuff. But when I look at actually Sydney, Brisbane, and I look at the level of control of the government and see where the culture seems to be in terms of abandonment of God and just completely humanist, yeah. secular, yeah. I think that I think there's a, a very, very large mountain to climb in Australia. I think in some ways, yeah. Yeah. in some ways, they're worse off than us, yeah. Oh, yeah. which is saying a lot. Yeah. And that, that's not to, that's not to say anything to denigrate the Australian church or, or Australian people. It's just to say there's such a secularization and humanism inherent in everything that I think that they have a huge mountain to climb. I think you're right. It's got to go back to the basics, foundation. Who's the sovereign? Who's the creator? Mm -hmm. You know, what's unique about you as an image bearer of God? What's the foundation for ethics? Oh, and. Now that we've got that, let's talk about how fallen you are and how you need Jesus. Right. And then, and then from there, you know, I always, I just think it's, it's, you know, with our ministry, we're big believers in the gospel of God's grace, the gospel of the kingdom, 
We believe that Christ is going to be victorious in history through regenerating people, saving people all over the world. And we believe ultimately that as people are saved, their hearts are changed and then they love God's law. Amen. So Amen. as you change a culture through the gospel, they begin to love God's law and start to employ it all over, right, the, the, all over the place. Yeah. So when I look at a place like Australia, and of course us, we're in a mess too, but Australia, it just seems like so many of those foundations that are necessary to really begin building are just not there. So as we talk about ending abortion in Australia, I'm looking around and I'm thinking, you know, I think, I think if you did a poll across the United States and you said, who wants to ban abortion right now? I think we would win. Mm -hmm. Even even the nominal Christians, right. you know, Mormons, Muslims. That reflects I th accurately. I think, yeah. I think that we would, if it was by a vote of the people, I think abortion would actually be illegal. Mm -hmm. I don't feel the same about here. Right. No. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have that confidence. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know where we were at last night. I don't want to... I don't want to say that all of Australia or even all of Sydney's like this, but we were talking yesterday when we were walking around. It was like blatantly godless, and they were like proud of it. And you know, Zach, was, you were saying there's like no vestiges of Christianity. Yeah. We joked, but it's for real. Like the only vestige was a sign that said Church Street. There was nothing <laughs> right. else. Yeah. You know, everything. It was just like they were just like braggadocious almost about how much they hate God. Everywhere, everybody, and, and it was yeah. I think you're right. Just. They got a long ways to go. Which so, we know there's yeah. definitely solid uh, people in the Australian church, yeah. a solid movement in the Australian church, but it does culturally, and this is my second time in Australia and in New Zealand, it does seem culturally like there's just a much greater secularization. Yeah. And that, like I said, that's saying a lot because in America it is, I mean, it just seems total in many ways. Yeah. But I don't know, it just seems like there's a much larger they're at a stage where there's already more government sovereignty, government control, yeah. a hatred for the things of God. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just interesting to see where they're at. So I feel I really feel like this is the beginning for yeah. the Australian church and team in terms of bringing the gospel into conflict with abortion, working to communicate the authority of Jesus in the legislature. I really feel like they're at the very, very seed uh -huh. of all this. Yeah, we we may be just a little sprout out of the ground, mm -hmm. but I think they're at that seed stage, mm -hmm. where so much much of the Australian church needs to be needs, needs to be woken up to the fact that this is about the gospel, and you had better suffer, and you had better fight, right. because that's where you have to begin at that stage. Hashtag yeah. woke. Hashtag yeah. hashtag woke church. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point. You you can't fight humanism and paganism with more humanism, right? And worldly wisdom. Mm -hmm. You have to fight it with the revelation of scripture. And that's what Christians here need to stand on. And you said it, I mean, the gospel, the, the changing of people's hearts, the love that gets put into their hearts when they become children of God, uh, the desire for God's law and his will to be done in all of society, that change of the heart happens through the gospel. Hearts are reoriented towards true worship of God rather than worship of the created things. And as a result of that, societies and cultures change back to God. There's a production of the things which God loves and values, culture of life, a big word, but cosmology in an a, a, a order, a structure of life right. that's built and designed around God and His Word, and that reflects in the law. So I think if Christians here can focus on clearly communicating what makes the good news good, why is the gospel of the kingdom why is the gospel of God's rule in the world? How is that good news right. for a culture that is just steeped in man-centeredness? Well, that's critical. I like how you said that. You put it in terms of the gospel of the kingdom. I really feel like that's like one of the essential parts that both our nation and Australia and New Zealand need to learn is the good news of the kingdom. Ask the average Christian that in America or Australia, say, what's good news about the kingdom? I think. I'm guessing. I think most of them would probably think through it and go, that we get to go to heaven one day. That yeah. like God's kingdom sure. is the destination for us. Right. But that's just not what the Old right. Testament or New Testament say about the kingdom of God. It's no. a very present reality. It's here. Jesus brought it. Jesus is bringing people into it now. Like that doesn't mean going to heaven one day. Right, right. It means like right now. So like that's the thing, right? What's right. good news about God's rule? Right. Because it applies to Sydney and their legislature. Yes. The rule of, right of now. Jesus is good news because he will rule over your legislature with wisdom, power, justice, right? Yes. Through his word. 
Yes. That's complete, good news. Complete sovereignty. Right. If you look at the Gospel of Mark, Jesus shows up on the scene, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The time is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. This is the time that's in, it's at the fingertip reach right now. So the question is, what is the kingdom without the king? Right. The king and the gospel of, of the, the good news of the kingdom is that the king has come. Right. And because living in light of that knowledge of the king coming, repent and believe. Believe in the good news that changes hearts, that changes minds, and ultimately leads to the change in society. Yeah. Change in the production of righteous laws that protect the unborn, that value the distinctions, gender distinctions between male and female, that honors marriage, and everything that produces a culture of life. Those are the things in society that need protection. In a society like this, those are the things that are having the most protections removed. Right. right. Because it's a culture of death. And even though it's beautiful, even though it's glorious, and it bears the, the handiwork of, of its creator, it, it has a darkness to it. And that right. darkness is something that can only uh, be broken into by the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. So the culture of death will end in our nation and in this one and in every one first with repentance. Yep. Yes, so right. there's no, no culture of death going away until there's repentance. That's right. Yes, a change of mind.